Now you see this kind of thing going on all over the country, gas main renewal. This is part of a 30 year program to upgrade our gas mains, make them safer and make them fit for the future. But at the same time, we're being told that gas is being phased out. Get rid of your gas boiler, go all electric. Now, if it's serious about getting to net zero by 2050, and they've got a 30 year program to renew the gas mains, to my mind, something doesn't add up. Because one thing's sure, they're not replacing all this pipe work just to feed a few gas cookers. If we take what the government is telling us at face value and we are gonna go all electric, what would that even look like? Well, for a start, we haven't got enough electricians. We know we've got a skill shortage in this country and it's going to get worse. And we need to train thousands and thousands of people to work on all these solar panels, car chargers, and all the other things which we plan to do to get an all electric future. Now you could say, all right, just take your gas engineers and retrain them, but is that possible? Now, my suspicion is that this idea that we're going to one day rely totally upon renewable energy, electricity for all our heating and all our cooking and everything else running our vehicles is really pie in the sky. And I also believe that the government knows that and what they're playing at here is just the thing of bouncing a lot of people into getting heat pumps and different forms of renewable heating before they just throw in the towel and say, do you know what, we're going to keep gas boilers. And one of the things that makes me think that is that this pipe work that they're putting in here is going to be hydrogen ready. And we're producing hydrogen ready boilers. And there are also a number of schemes throughout the country where hydrogen is being rolled out and tested. So if we are going for an all electric future, we're gonna need a lot more cables because some of these cables were put in a hundred years ago and are woefully inadequate for the kind of demand that we're gonna place upon them. So does that mean they're gonna dig up all the roads, all the streets and put in new cables? Well, perhaps they're gonna thread them up these abandoned gas pipes in a few years time. And at the moment, the substations that we do have are woefully inadequate to deal with all the new car chargers and all the heat pumps which we plan to install. Of course, you need lots of pylons to take those high voltage cables from one town to another. So let's assume we get all those cables in, we've got the substations in, we've got everything ready to go and we want to switch off the gas and we want to go all electric. But what happens when all those wind turbines and those solar panels aren't producing enough electricity? Because there are plenty of days throughout the year when the sun isn't particularly bright and the wind isn't blowing. Now there's a word for that in German, but I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. But what it means is we've got to have backup. We're going to have to have some kind of power stations which are ready to go, which are on standby. And that means that those people that own the power stations that do the investment have got to be paid for not producing electricity as well as for producing electricity. Of course, this already happens with the renewables because when the wind turbines aren't required, when it's blowing a hoolie and we're not consuming that much electricity, the people who own the wind turbines still want to be paid for all that expensive equipment that they've invested in. And investment is very much a part of the story because the people that invest in the solar panels and the wind turbines need to be guaranteed a return on their investment. And the government has set the cost of electricity to entice those people to invest and make sure that they get rewarded adequately. And that means that electricity will carry this green levy and it will not get cheaper in the future even though the cost of producing the electricity falls because as it's coming from the sun, it's coming from the wind, the cost of the investment has got to be repaid. And the only way that can be repaid is by the government guaranteeing what you might call an artificially inflated price for electricity. And of course, if we're playing roulette with the energy markets, as always, it's the poor that suffer. Anybody that's in fuel poverty is going to have a very hard time in the future because it's exactly the same as the congestion charge in cities such as London, 
the centre of London has now become a playground for the rich. And the only people that you see driving around central London now are those that can afford the congestion charge. So if you're one of those people that is struggling to pay your fuel bills at the moment, then I'm sorry to say that things are not going to get better, particularly if you're on a prepaid meter. And of course, the electricity price also has an impact on heat pumps, because although the government is very keen to tell us that heat pumps are economical, if you look at our mailbag, you'll see that we get countless emails from people who are telling us that they're far from economical. People have changed their gas boiler over to a heat pump, taking the government's word for it, and they're finding that their bills have gone sky high. I'm very much in favour of us getting rid of fossil fuels in the future, but I think we need to do it in a controlled way, we need to do it in a realistic way, and not just get rid of the fossil fuels before we've got viable alternatives. And at the moment we simply don't have enough in place to make the transition from carbon to carbon neutral, seamless and comfortable for us all. If you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because we've got more videos like this coming up soon.